W-O-V-U-L-P Cleveland. Now, our voices today. Hello and welcome to Our Voices Today on WOVU 95.9 FM Burton Bell Car Community Radio. Streaming live from WOVU.org and the WOVU mobile app. Man, make sure you um, t- check out the app. Make sure you have the app downloaded to your uh, handheld device, whether that be a a smartphone. Um, I don't think you can put the app on the flip phone, but you probably can at this point. But um, your desktop computer, you don't need the app for that. You just need to go to the website, wovu.org. But on your tablet computer, you probably need to download the app. Uh, to make it just an easier, you know, I guess if you want to use your web browser for something else, you know, just tap on W-O-V-U. Take it anywhere with you 24-7, 365 days a year, and sometimes 366. I'm T.C. Lewis. I hope that all of you are well and uh, feeling good and uh, drinking fresh, clean water and eating the healthiest foods you can find, afford, and or tolerate. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I uh, hope you got some good rest. Yes, because all of that enables us to have a uh, very uh, calm, nice, productive thoughts. Uh, and even when we're not having the most productive or kind thoughts, it's easy to make that shift when you've gotten some good rest. <laughs> Your body has the uh, right uh, nutritional uh, elements to, uh, to, to to have you feeling well. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, We all experience moments of negativity and anger, but where you start, you know, where your your foundation is, that's important, where you are in that moment of anger. So anyway, I hope that, again, everyone is well. We have a great show today. It is, again, uh, time for our friends from the Legal Aid Society of Cleveland to join us on the program uh, so uh, we will be talking about public benefits. Remember, if you have a question, this is for all of us who, uh, you know, receive, you know, less Social Security, you know, disability or retirement, uh, you know, like uh, SNAP benefits, Medicaid, Medicare, all of those things that, uh, you know, we have come to uh be important in our lives. We're going to talk about that. All the legalities, this and that, of course, and as it relates to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, So let's remember that the Legal Aid Society, their mission is to secure justice and resolve fundamental problems for those uh, in low-income situations who are vulnerable You know, you need access to quality legal advice and assistance. That's what the Legal Aid Society is for. You know, it it levels the playing field. You know what I'm saying? Gives you the access you need to uh, expert legal advice in civil matters. Um, And, uh, you know, giving you that leg up in those legal situations can be tough. You know, uh, getting in front of prosecutors and judges without somebody uh, on your side or, or someone to advocate for you. You know, there are a lot of rights that we have that we aren't aware of because sometimes you don't know until you're put, until you are in those situations to where you find out <laughs> what your rights are or are not. So Legal Aid Society of Cleveland is here for you and for me. Uh, you can get in touch with them by calling 
Uh, if you need help, you can apply by phone with that number. You can also get in touch with them online at lasclev dot org. That's las cleave with just the v dot org, uh, and uh, you you will get in touch. You'll be able to fill out a form online, and uh, Legal Aid will get in touch with you that way. So uh, you know, Legal Aid. Don't sleep on it. Don't sleep on it. If you get into a skirmish and you need some help, that is non not criminal in nature. Uh, call call our friends at the Legal Aid Society. Uh, they they want to do they want to work this out for you. So uh, okay, that's enough TC rambling, right? That's we've had our fill uh, for this edition of Our Voices today. Uh, again, our friends from Legal Aid Society are here. Let me go and welcome uh, the attorney of the hour, the et- attorney of the hour, Deborah Dahlman. She is uh, a practicing attorney in the health and opportunity group. So she is going to guide us through our conversation uh, around uh, public benefits and our rights. Welcome, uh, Deborah Dahlman, to Our Voices today on WOVU. How are you? Good morning, TC. Thanks for having me. And and again, thanks for the opportunity you've given Legal Aid to share important information with your listeners. So, so happy to be here with you. Yeah, awesome. I totally appreciate uh, the time that Legal Aid uh, is able to spend with us and our listeners, uh, just peeling back the layers uh, of, of how us as regular people and the justice system, you know, uh, kind of it, it, it comes together at you guys are at the intersection of that. So we're always, uh, excited to, uh, have you on to kind of unpack these, um, tricky things, you know, such as our civil rights. So, um, <laughs> today, Deborah, uh, tell us, you know, a, a little bit about your background And, um, you know, uh, you are part of the Health and Opportunity Group. Tell us about the work uh, that's done within that uh, that group at Legal Aid. Um, Well, I've been with the Legal Aid Society for 13 years now. I started off as a volunteer. And before that, I was I worked for a private law firm. And, you know, sometimes you're not always happy with the job that you do, (laughs) even though you're going to work. And as soon as I started volunteering for legal aid, I knew they were for me. Assisting these clients was was just certainly so rewarding. And so 13 years later, here I am. And as you said, I, I practice with our health and opportunity practice group. And we, we focus at legal aid on cases that impact basic needs such as health, shelter, safety, economics, and education. And our health and opportunity practice group is really a diverse practice group with attorneys practicing in in several different areas. We have immigration attorneys who help with naturalization petitions. Uh, We have our medical legal partnership attorneys who, um, who assist with cases uh, referred by Metro Health, St. Vincent Charity Medical Center, University Hospitals. We have an education practice uh, within our, our group, and those attorneys focus on assisting parents whose children need special education services. And then there's my area, public benefits. So uh, mostly we see cases involving Medicaid, Medicare, children's Social Security cases, and then SNAP, which was formerly known as food stamps, cash assistance programs, and then some veterans benefits programs. Um, For public benefits cases, we most often see um, cases involving terminations, denial of benefits, or a person is not receiving the correct amount of benefits, or the person just doesn't understand the process. Like you, as you said, TC, sometimes you just need a leg up and it is at times unfortunate that there are barriers uh, for people struggling to access many of the benefits which are meant to assist people in poverty and give them um, 
a leg up to get out to to get out of poverty. Yeah. So we try to help them overcome those barriers in in the cases. Um, generally, they could be resolved by reaching out to the administrative agency, like Job and Family Services or Social Security, and trying to understand where the agency is taking the action that they are. And sometimes the agency is wrong, and we as attorneys do not hesitate to point that out. Um, so we we try to get the issue resolved and explain to the client why. And if the agency is correct, then of course it help, we explain to the client why the action's being taken. So we, we give them information. Um, at other times we do go a step further. We represent the client in administrative hearings such as hearings before the Ohio Bureau of State hearings or at social security hearings before an administrative law judge. So basically those are the types of cases, public benefits cases that we see in our practice group. Yeah. All right. That's um, that really uh, brings a lot of clarity uh, to our subject matter today. So, again, like I said, all of these things uh, touch many of our uh, listeners, Medicaid, Medicare, SNAP benefits, cash assistance, veterans benefits. Um, don't hesitate. You know, if you are having an issue with uh, like uh, uh, Deborah said, um you know, a denial of benefits, termination of benefits. I'm sure uh, people have had struggles uh, during COVID-19. Uh, Although, you know, with things, I, I heard a, um, a, a story, a friend of mine, she actually has uh, Medicaid for her and her daughter. And she, I think I mentioned this last time too, when we were speaking with legal aid, um, she was worried about being late in turning in her renewal paperwork. Um, yes. Yeah. And um, the deadline passed and she didn't hear anything, you know, saying, hey, you need to get in touch with us or, you, you know, you're later, you know, this is going to be denied. Um, so she sent the stuff in as soon as she could and, you know, checked back in a week or so and her case was still open. So did COVID like kind of relax things a little bit uh, in terms of, you know, uh, deadlines and, uh, um, you know, paperwork requirements in terms of public benefits? Well, yes. Yes. In some ways it has. Um, I can speak specifically with the Medicaid uh, during the pandemic. Um, states, States have definitely seen increased Medicaid enrollment, of course, during the economic turndown. Uh, but one of the most significant changes for Medicaid is that states are not permitted to disenroll or discontinue enrollment if you were enrolled in Medicaid uh, prior to March uh, okay. 2020. So this means like, you're, like the person you're talking about, um, it, even if you know, in the process, maybe the renewal stuff was late, um, or if there's increased income, which sometimes means you're no longer eligible for Medicaid, states cannot disenroll people from Medicaid. Um, they can only discontinue coverage if the person voluntarily requests it, which I guess, why would you at this point? Um, they're no longer a resident of the state or if they're deceased. So this continuous coverage for Medicaid uh, is in effect through the end of the month in which the national uh, public health emergency ends. So okay. um, I'm telling clients, you know, try not to worry about Medicaid right now. Um, as far as other things during COVID-19, like accessing public benefits, um, you know, normally a person could apply for these benefits by completing a paper application, going into, for instance, Job and Family Services or Social Security, but we know that access is limited to these offices, so um, many agencies had to manage a greater volume of applications um, despite the office closure, staffing shortages, and, and potential difficulties with remote, remote working environment. Um, so they had to respond to increased applications and how to process those uh, quickly. Um, I can speak, 
like in the SNAP program, um, Ohio requested waivers. Uh, for instance, they uh, waived the interview requirement for a period of time. So that sped up some of the application mm -hmm. process. Um, so that was one of the most significant changes is that some of the agencies were, were exercising some program mm -hmm. flexibilities to, to get people enrolled and to approve applications. Wow, that's uh, that's interesting to hear. I mean, that's good though. That's good that uh, that uh, the flexibility was able to uh, be given with in terms of our uh, in terms of benefits that people receive. Um, the continuous coverage on Medicare. I didn't know uh, that. Uh, so it's, uh, as long as there's a, a national public emergency, people are not allowed to be dis in rolled so uh whew, we can relax on that y'all but still you know it's good to have things in order <laughs> any yes, yes. yes anyway so today we are speaking again with our friends from the legal aid society of cleveland attorney deborah dahlman is here uh from the health and opportunity group uh at legal aid uh answering our questions talking to us about uh our um rights around public benefits uh have you been terminated or uh denied a benefit you have a question send us a text to the wovu talkback line 216-200-7848 more when we come back with legal aid society of cleveland stay tuned Stand up, my people. want a rewarding career with great pay and benefits how about job security well, the City of Cleveland's Division of Police is currently accepting applications for patrol officers. Enter the dynamic field of law enforcement. We are continuously changing and progressing while dispensing 21st century constitutional and fair policing. Call 216-623-5233 to speak with our recruiters or go to governmentjobs.com slash career slash Cleveland. Apply today. This message is brought to you by the City of Cleveland and WOVU 95.9 FM. Our voice is United, a Burton Bell Car community radio station. Hey listeners, here at WOVU 95.9 FM, we want to stay connected with you. So like our page on Facebook, which is WOVU 95.9 FM. Or you can call our request line at 216-271-0959. Again, that is 216-271-0959. Also, don't forget to visit our website at wovu.org. Keep it locked on WOVU 95.9 FM, a BBC community radio station. What's up, Cleveland? It's your girl, Jazzy J, and I just want to know, have you downloaded our app yet? Yes, our app for Androids and iPhones. All you got to do is go to your app store and download WOVU 95.9 FM, and you can listen to us anywhere. It's time to make the short story Welcome back. You are tuned in to Our Voices Today on WOVU 95.9 FM. Ah, the thing I was trying to, y'all, I was trying to remember uh, something. I'll make sure I uh, mention it at the end, but it's something that's about the summertime. Hopefully it'll stick in my brain. But right now, let's focus on our conversation today, uh, answering your questions and getting more information about our, our rights around accessing public benefits those things such as social security um uh, medicaid medicare snap benefits cash assistance veterans benefits all these types of things that help us help support us uh in our lives uh you know from uh, birth until you know our senior citizenship age when you, you know all through it so uh public benefits is the topic of discussion deborah dahlman is here uh from legal aid society uh of cleveland and so um deborah um uh, mm, 
So the, there's definitely was an increase in uh, people getting in touch with uh, public benefits, especially um, Medicaid and uh, SNAP benefits. Um, also unemployment, right? Um, at a greater number during uh, this pandemic. Um, and so there were probably a lot of people who really um, just were brand new to the process. People who perhaps had, you know, been continuously employed for most of their lives. And now they found themselves in a situation where um, they need, uh, you know, food, they need uh, housing help, having, you know, lost income. Um, how was legal aid um, instrumental in helping people, you know, kind of being pointed in the right direction? Yes, TC. I mean, you, you are definitely right. There were so many people who lost jobs, businesses closed, who who never who never applied or never had to rely on public benefits. So, you know, navigating um, the system uh, and accessing benefits was totally new to them. And and we did see cases in which clients, for instance, had never applied for for SNAP benefits and it highlighted the the existing problem of food insecurity. I mean, it's a huge problem in the United States affecting families, millions of children, seniors, people with disabilities. And I think I've seen a recent estimate by Feeding America that in 2021, um, 42 million people will experience food insecurity. So there was definitely an increase in in applications for SNAP, and and we we did see uh, a number of clients who had never had never applied for benefits before. Yeah. So for those, of, I'm sure some of those people are in our audience, um, you know, who have been saying, you know, I need help, you know, with food. I need, uh, you know, help with my rent and I'm not really sure, you know, how to get started. Can you give us, um, you know, some tips on how to like apply for these uh, different services? Sure. Yes. Happy to TC. So for any uh, benefit, not unemployment benefits, I, I know very little about those, but for benefits that uh, I'm talking about Medicaid, SNAP, cash assistance, those state uh, administered programs, you can apply online um, because the, the county job and family services offices are still closed to the public. You can apply online at ohio.benefits.gov or you can call the Ohio Benefits um, hotline and that's 1-844-640 six four four six and you'll be directed to the appropriate customer service representative to do an application you can do an application for everything all at once snap medicaid cash assistance if you're if you're eligible and again it, the process used to be that you could apply in person but um now basically online or by calling mm -hmm. Has it has the the pandemic? Well, no, we talked about this already. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to ask you: Has the pandemic uh, made it harder uh, to process applications? Um, uh, but uh, you know, you said that um, they've relaxed some of the restrictions, um, or you know, some of those hard and fast rules, uh, enable to allow the faster processing of a larger volume uh, yeah. of applicants. Yeah. So um, I there's something um, during at some point last year that I heard parents uh, talking about receiving people who had not been in the SNAP benefits program um, prior to COVID-19 um, received uh, an a EBT card um, if because they had a child uh, living with them or um, as a dependent in their household. And uh, I had no idea, you know, about this until people started kind of whispering about it. And um, so then I started checking my mail, but I don't think I ever received one. But some people said it, it was so uh, inconspicuous that they may have thought it was, you know, some kind of credit card offer or loan offer mm -hmm. and they threw it out. You know, um, can you t tell us about what this was? And is, is that was that a real thing? 
Yes, TC, it was a real thing. So in order to address food insecurity, uh, particularly with children who weren't in school and who normally would receive um, reduced lunches or free meals. Uh, so Ohio and many, many other states uh, issued what is called pandemic EBT. And basically it, it's um, SNAP benefits. It came on a separate, if you weren't already received, receiving SNAP, it came on a separate card, looked like a credit card, but it said PEBT, and PEBT stands for Pandemic Electronic Benefits Transfer. And again, it was uh, benefits to help purchase food for households uh, with children who normally would have received free or reduced price school meals because schools were closed or they were um, participating virtually or remotely. So, Federal law allowed states to implement this temporary program. It, it's administered by, by Job and Family Services, partnering with the Ohio Department of Education. And parents don't have to apply for the benefit. Uh, JFS obtains a list of schools or school districts of all children who were eligible for and receiving uh, reduced price meals. Mm -hmm. and. It was based on the amount of the benefit was based on the number of days their school or district was closed or doing remote learning. Um, so that continues for the 2021 school year. Um, the benefit will be about $6.82 per day. Um, and if, if a household is not currently receiving SNAP benefits, that's when that household will get a new card. Don't throw the card away because <laughs> benefits will be issued every month. Um, if a household is already receiving SNAP benefits, then these additional PEBD, PEBD benefits are added to their existing card. Um, so again, they're issued monthly. And recently, so you had children who were enrolled in school, they were getting these additional benefits. What about the children who weren't enrolled in school? What about children under six? Right. So now, um, recently, due to federal law changes, children who reside in a county who are under the age of six, not in school, um, if they reside in a county where one or more schools are closed or operating with reduced attendance or hours, they're eligible for PEBT as of October 1st through June 20th. So again, it's a separate benefit in addition to the family's normal monthly SNAP benefits. So yeah, awesome. I did, but, mm -hmm. I, I did have some information that I know people ask me when are these benefits issued. So I just, for the last few months, April benefits will be issued by the end of June. May benefits issued by the end of July and June benefits issued by the end of August. Okay. This is for the pandemic EBT? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. And then summer PEBT. Oh, so, wow. Yes. Yeah, so these, again, this was just especially important for children um, and households where they really relied on school meals. And then Congress in March passed, um, I think it was the American Rescue Plan, mm -hmm. which includes extension of the PEBT to the summer. Um, right now, the details of Ohio's plan really aren't known yet. Uh, we don't have the, the, or the guidance from Ohio, but it's available to all children who are eligible for free and reduced um, meals. And I do have a website. It does look like um, states can set a standard benefit amount, but it looks like it's probably around $375 per child for the summer. So that's significant. Um, Ohio has a pretty good website. I was just trying to find it here www.ohiopebt.org. So, yeah. And you don't have to apply. Okay. So that's just giving you information. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. They do have a hotline too. 866 244-0071. Okay. All right. So if you want to look, if you feel like you're missing your pandemic EBT card, call that number 866-244-0071. 866-244-0071. We are getting all of the information about public benefits uh and uh you know uh, with our friend from the legal aid society of cleveland deborah dahlman this is her uh lane of expertise so uh get her while she's hot on the airwaves with us send me a text message to the talkback line 216-200-7848 or call us live 216-271 0959 that is the live call in and request line uh so uh stay tuned more with uh deborah dahlman from the legal aid society of cleveland when we return from this break you are tuned in to our voices today on wovu 95.9 fm it's burton bell car community radio we will be right back WOVU listeners, did you know you can call us during any live show? Did you know you can ask questions or give your comments live on the air? If you didn't know, now you know. Call the WOVU request line at 216-271-0959. Your voice is our request. No one says it like you. You're better than the rest. Call us 216-271-0959. Five, nine. Questions, comments, complaints. We want all that and the kitchen sink. This is WOVU, our voices united. We can't do it without you. Call on through. What's up, Cleveland? It's your girl, Jazzy J, and I just want to know, have you downloaded our app yet? Yes, our app for Androids and iPhones. All you got to do is go to your app store and download WOVU 95.9 FM, and you can listen to us anywhere. The Thea Bowman Center has been serving the community for over 50 years and provides services to help support Mount Pleasant and surrounding communities of all ages. Some of these programs include adult education, like GED and computer classes, food pantry, senior outreach, youth after school and summer programs, and much more. Are you a Cleveland resident in need of GED preparation, a food pantry, youth or senior programs? Call the Thea Bowman Center at 216-491-0669 or visit theabowmancenter.org to register today. This message is brought to you by the Thea Bowman Center and WOVU 95.9 FM, Our Voices United, a Burton Bell Car community radio station. Hello, this is Ronnie Cannon, Community Engagement Manager from Tours Employment, and you're listening to WOVU 95.9 FM, Burton Bell Car Community Radio. It's time to make the short story longer, yeah. Welcome back. You are tuned in to Our Voices Today. Uh, I'm T.C. Lewis. Uh, Today we continue the conversation with our friends at Legal Aid Society of Cleveland. With us today, attorney Deborah Dahlman. She works in the Health and Opportunity Group, and uh, her specialty is public benefits. So we are talking all things Medicaid, Medicare, uh, SNAP, or food stamps, cash assistance, veterans benefits uh deborah is uh child support a public benefit 
No, it isn't. I mean, child support is court ordered or administratively ordered. Um, and, you know, it's an obligation by okay. you know, the person that's ordered to pay support. Okay. So <laughs> I, I do know if, if a person applies for Ohio's cash assistance, known as Ohio Works First, there is, as a part of um, the participation in that program, you have to agree that the uh, Child Support Enforcement Agency can issue or put on a child support order. And, and so that's a condition of receiving cash assistance mm-hmm. from, from the state. Okay. Um, and, and so, benefit. oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I said it's not a public benefit. It's it's definitely an obligation of a parent if if it's ordered. Awesome. So um, we talked somewhat uh, about uh, or or been telling everyone that you know part of the uh, ways that you help people with public benefits is guiding them through um, probably the appeals process when they become terminated or denied a benefit. Um, can you, you know, kind of walk us through, um, let's say I receive a letter today that says something has, like I applied for a benefit and I've been denied or I've been getting a benefit and, uh, you know, it's being terminated and I feel like that's without, you know, just cause. What should I do? Should I, there's more to be done than just saying, well, oh, well, right. I guess I won't be getting this anymore. Yes, absolutely. I don't think you want to say, oh, well. It could be that the agency is correct, but if you get, um, so I'll just, I'll just speak to the benefits administered by Ohio Department of Job and Family Services, Mm -hmm. like SNAP or Medicaid. So before any action is, is taken, you'll receive, it's called a notice of action. And sometimes they're quite lengthy and sometimes they may be a little bit confusing, but it will tell you for instance, your SNAP benefits have been terminated and there should be a reason on there, Um, you know, maybe over income or, you know, usually it's, it's over, usually it's because of over income for termination of SNAP benefits. And um, the important thing to know is that you can request a state hearing. That's a hearing with the Bureau of State Hearings, and they will decide whether the county was correct in making this determination. I always tell clients, because they're confused, they might not understand, I always tell clients, go ahead and request a state hearing. Call us, um, do an intake you know, online at lasclebe.org or call, because if you're being terminated from a benefit, you have 15 days to request a state hearing. And when you do that within that time frame, no action can be taken by Job and Family Services. That means right. continue to receive those benefits until there's a hearing. So I always tell clients to just go ahead and request a state hearing. There's a form with the notice, you can fax. You can email, but a lot of clients don't have access to technology. Uh, you can call. Um, mm-hmm. So they, I always encourage clients to request a state hearing. It could be that the decision is correct, but why not request or why not appeal anyway? Mm-hmm. And then if they do an intake with us, we'll review the case. We'll reach out to Job and Family Services, look at the rules, try to determine was this action correct? And, you know, sometimes it is, sometimes the client just doesn't understand, but the, the process is to request a stay hearing to appeal and stay hearings are even before the pandemic there, they were mostly conducted over the phone. They're really informal. Mm-hmm. Sometimes clients, a lot of times clients represent themselves. Having an attorney at a stay hearing is actually not the norm Um, and quite frankly you shouldn't really have to get an attorney Um, but unfortunately sometimes the agencies make incorrect decisions and so but that's the process a state hearing 
Yeah, I think it's uh, 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 cool that you can have somebody. <laughs> it just makes me think of, first of all, like being on the playground and having your best friend there with you uh, while you are dealing <laughs> with some type of dispute with another another kid. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. And sometimes I tell clients, um, you know, the agency made the correct decision and they'll say, but I don't think it's fair. And so that I encourage them to go ahead with the state hearing and explain to the hearing officer um, because sometimes you just want to be heard. Mm -hmm. Right. So have you do you ever deal with cases where people uh, feel like they have been discriminated against? you know, by a, a, a benefits agency? I mean, we, we do, we have had intakes where the clients that they were discriminated against um, for, you know, for whatever reason. And I don't have it off the top of my head, um, TC, but there is a process. And, um, and I think it's pretty much on Job and Family Services website. But certainly if we saw a systemic issue where where there was discrimination we would definitely want to evaluate that look at it try to figure out is that you know is this is there a is there legal recourse Mm -hmm. so yeah 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 so uh listen if you are or someone you know you know is struggling with a legal issue that impacts any of your basic needs you know, housing, safety, finances, you know, today we're talking about food stamps, Medicaid, Medicare, um, you know, not child support, (laughs) but, you know, if you need help accessing your veterans benefits, call Legal Aid Society of Cleveland. That phone number is 216-687-1900, 216-687-1900. One nine zero zero. They are here to help. Uh, you know, uh, the, if you feel intimidated by any part of the process, you know, give them a call um, and, and, you know, uh, to go through the intake process. You can also do it through their website at www.lasclev.org. That's L A S. C L E V as in Victor dot O R G. And also if you uh, speak Spanish, if you, you know, are more comfortable discussing things in Spanish, you can call their Spanish speaking speakers intake line 216-586-3190. So uh, we're talking public benefits today, but remember legal aid society can help you with a plethora of, of legal issues, you know, uh, from like we were talking today, public benefits, housing, safety, finance, they run the gamut, uh, outside of criminal things, they are there to help you. So that's a good place for us to take our last break during this wonderful hour, uh, with us from legal aid society of Cleveland is Deborah Dahlman, uh, giving us her expert, um, uh, guidance around public benefits and hipping us on to some uh, crucial information uh check out those pebt benefits 866-244-0071 and if you would like to apply for any of those benefits medicaid snap cash assistance call this number 844-640-6446 you always have to have your pen and paper ready listening to this show 844-640-6446 to apply by phone for any of those things or you can go online to ohio.benefits.gov ohio.benefits.gov so stay tuned more with our guests as we wrap up this hour of our voices today on wovu 95.9 fm What's up, Cleveland? It's your girl, Jazzy J, and I just want to know, have you downloaded our app yet? Yes, our app for Androids and iPhones. All you got to do is go to your app store and download WOVU 95.9 FM, and you can listen to us anywhere. 
Hi, this is Joy Johnson, Executive Director of Burton Bell Car Development, also referred to as BBC. When you hear BBC, you may think of the British Broadcasting Company. We are actually named for three community leaders who served the Central and Kinsman neighborhoods in the past, Lonnie Burton, James Bell, and Charles V. Carr. Residents of the Central and Kinsman neighborhoods may be familiar with those names because we have the Lonnie Burton Recreation Center. We have Charles Carr Avenue in Garden Valley. We have the James Bell Pool on East 71st Street in Central. Many of our residents were alive when those three leaders served the community. Folks outside of the community sometimes think we're a law firm, a CPA, or that Burton, Bell, or Carr are people who work here and founded the organization. They were all deceased when and Burton Bell Carr was founded in 1990, and the organization was named to honor their contributions to the neighborhoods. So now you know who we are, Burton Bell Carr Development. All right, we are back wrapping up this hour of Our Voices today on WOVU 95.9 FM. I'm T.C. Lewis. With us is attorney Deborah Dahlman from Legal Aid Society of Cleveland, one of our wonderful friends from that great organization, helping you uh, sift through legal issues uh, that affect your everyday life. Sometimes you don't even realize that they're You can get help. You know, you don't have to have a whole lot of money if you don't have the money uh, to, uh, you know, uh, provide legal assistance for yourself by securing an attorney. The Legal Aid Society is there for you. So call them 216-687-1900. I'm sure you could just call uh, Deborah and uh, just find out, you know, if this is if you're in a situation that you may benefit even greater from, you know, have a more favorable outcome by, uh, you know, having an attorney uh, uh, give advise you in the process, whatever it is, except for criminal stuff. Deborah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we encourage clients to go through the intake process because we do definitely, um, you know, we ask questions about income, of course. Of course. Uh, so just to make yeah. sure that that the person is eligible for our services. But um, I feel, I feel uh, our case acceptance criteria especially for public benefits, we've really expanded a lot. So mm-hmm. if there's pre-pandemic, we probably wouldn't have really looked at a case where a person was, you know, maybe talking about the application, the initial application process, or or maybe we wouldn't um, have necessarily uh, looked at a case where a person was saying, I'm having trouble getting through to, um, you know, customer service or the hotline. Because because of limited resources, we probably would have given mm-hmm. them advice, but we definitely want to address those systemic issues that make it more difficult for clients to receive the benefits that they're likely eligible for. So uh, one of the questions that we do ask on intake, I think we have a, a spot on the online intake form, like, where did you hear about us? And if they put your radio show Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll let intake know to to look at those and make sure I see them as well. So, um, but I definitely encourage clients to call, call or do the online intake. Yeah. Sure. So call, call, call again, 216-687-1900. Uh, Deborah, anything else uh, we need to know? In regard to, regarding um, uh, additional benefits during, you know, the pandemic, uh, as it's still a public emergency. 
Well, I think I got so excited about the PEBT benefits. I forgot to mention um, the additional SNAP benefits um, mm. because of the public health emergency. Many states, including Ohio, were issuing the maximum amount of SNAP benefits for households. Like, for instance, a household of one, the maximum that that person can receive is $234 a month. Now, maybe because of their income or other expenses, other other things, um, maybe technically they're only eligible, say, for 100 in normal times, and I'm using air quotes there, whatever is normal. Um, so, but because of the pandemic, all households receive maximum, maximum benefit. So person of one maybe would have received 100, is now getting 234. And that makes a significant difference for a lot of households. Um, so that was all last year. And, um, and I was encouraging clients to apply. I've had some seniors before that maybe normally would have only been eligible for the minimum, which was $19. And so this was a perfect time for them to apply. Sometimes maybe they would say, oh, 19, it's hardly worth it. Um, but from 19 to 234, the maximum, right. it was definitely worth it. So I was encouraging uh, people who normally were kind of dismissive about a minimum benefit to apply. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, because of um, Governor DeWine yesterday rescinded Ohio's health orders, mm -hmm. it looks like that maximum will probably go away in July. Um, the, it's unknown whether, whether the governor's office will take action to ex extend that, but um, there for a while, I was definitely encouraging clients mm -hmm. to apply for SNAP. Mm -hmm. Other other benefits, uh, even though this isn't in my practice area, I know there were there was rent assistance available through the Northeast Ohio Rent Help. Mm -hmm. um, There's a program funded by Cuyahoga County, City of Cleveland. Application information for that rent assistance is on our legal aid website, and we do have other rental assistance program information for our other counties because we serve Lorraine, Ashtabula, Geauga, and Lake. Um, for utility assistance, uh, you can call 211 for a referral to the nearest local community action agency. And again, we do have additional information on our website as well. Yeah. All right. Thank um, you. Oh, is there more? Yeah. The, the other program I, I was going to mention too, it's um, various counties have what they, what is called the Prevention Retention and Contingency Program, PRC. It's a cash assistance program for families with children under age 18. Uh, during like last year, there was emergency COVID assistance available through that program. Unfortunately, that's Additional money is no longer there, but I still encourage clients to apply for PRC monies. There are certain categories of assistance, like rent assistance, uh, assistance with uh, children's clothing. Um, so an application would have to be done with the county, though, for those funds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, look, if you are uh, struggling in any of those areas, you definitely want to uh, check out those uh, services, benefits.ohio.gov is the website, benefits.ohio.gov. And you can also call 844-640-6466, 844-640-6446. Um, so, you know, uh, Deborah, ultimately all of these um benefits that we've been talking about uh, on the show today are um, put in place to help alleviate uh, the effects of, of poverty. Um, yesterday, uh, we had a conversation, you know, about guaranteed 
income um you know that's being experimented with all across uh, the country and one of the thoughts that came out of that was to um and i'm paraphrasing though but you know how about we just give people um what they the the instead of like um administering benefits right uh telling people what to do with these uh resources that they've been given like this only goes to food this only goes to rent this only goes to you know clothes or whatever um just give people the funds and let them decide what to do with it and uh that may have a better outcome better uh generate better outcomes you know in terms of raising people out of poverty uh you know and since this is kind of like your field not kind of it is your field of expertise um do you have any thought on on that you know tc i i I really haven't seen you know that discussion but i but i certainly understand why people would say that's that's a that's a better option that's a better option than issuing like food stamps or vouchers for for certain items and stuff i I do know with the SNAP program, um, and I think it was just Cuyahoga County, and it may have just been for people who were receiving SSI, they did offer a cash, it was called cash, cash option, cash out option. So instead of, instead of receiving the actual food stamps or SNAP benefits, the person received a check. Um, I don't think uh, a lot of states do that anymore. And I don't know why. I don't know if that's a reflection of maybe it wasn't successful, but I do understand the thinking behind that. It, I Perhaps it could be that government doesn't trust us to make the correct decisions and they, um, you know, direct us, direct uh, people how to spend their money. But I would definitely like to see a, a further exploration of that so that people can try to make their own decisions. But you're right, these programs are for, um, the goal is to lift people out of poverty. And I think one of the most successful programs has been the SNAP program. Um, so, but I understand how the, what the conversation is going in. Mm-hmm. I, hope we, I hope we open that up and agencies kind of look at options for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, that's what we do here on WOVU, especially our voices today, uh, making those short stories longer. Thank you for uh, allowing us to uh, lengthen and deepen our understanding around public benefits. Deborah Dahlman, attorney uh, with the Legal Aid Society's Health Opportunity Group. Uh, We really appreciate you spending some time with us today thank you so much thank you tc for having me remember just call legal aid do an intake and um and our website has lots of helpful information lots of frequently asked questions and different brochures as well absolutely if you need legal help with housing unemployment benefits uh domestic safety or other any other fundamental need Visit Legal Aid's website at lasclev.org to apply for assistance. Let them know what's going on. They'll give you a call back and uh, see what they can do. You can also call uh, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays between 9 to 4. So you can call right now, 216-687-1900, 9 to 4, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Tuesday and Thursday from 9 to 2. Just give a call. 216-687-1900. If you speak Spanish, you can call 216-586-3190. Thank you to our friends at Legal Aid. Thank you so much, Danilo, for helping put these things together. We'll see you next time, WOVU listeners. Better days are ahead. Be ready with the training you'll need to get a great job. If you or your family has experienced financial hardship as a result of COVID-19, try seeking help with full tuition assistance. 
Whether you want to improve your skills, get certified, or train for a new career, go to tri-c.edu to check out our programs and resources. So what are you waiting for? Register now for online and on-campus summer classes. Tri-C is where futures begin. This message is brought to you by Tri-C and WOVU 95.9 FM, Our Voices United, a Burton Bell Car community radio station.